All right, Hearth and Homies, tonight's show is The Mel Blanc Show. This show was broadcast on CBS from September 3rd, 1946 until June 24th, 1947. If you're a fan of Mel Blanc and the numerous voices <laughs> that he creates, you're gonna love this show. He does a ton of character impersonations on the show and uh, you'll recognize some of them, I think. But he also uses his natural voice as he plays the owner of a fix-it shop, or as the show puts it, the bumbling owner of a fix-it shop that was never able to fix anything. So I hope you enjoy tonight's compilation. And as always, thanks for tuning in. You want strawberries? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. What? Okay, <laughs> we'll put that on. From Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle presents the Mel Blanc Show. <laughs> Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Earl Ross, B. Benadera, Joe Kern, Zookie, and Victor Miller and his orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard Mel Blanc as the happy postman. Hello, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. You've heard him as the famous train caller. Train leaving on track five for an I, Mazusa, and Cucamonga. You've heard him as Pedro. Pardon me for talking in your face, senorita. Thirty days, Hacienda. April, June, and Sombrero. <laughs> I think... You've heard him as the lovable character, Zuki. Well, I'm the fixer chop. I'm the president. I'm the president. I'm the president. I'm the vice president. Vice president. I'm the treasurer. I sweep out the place. You've heard him as the famous Warner Brothers cartoon character, Bugs Bunny. What's up, Doc? Now hear him as the star in his own show. Hello, Mel Blanc's fixer chop. You bend it, we mend it. Say, do you have a broken chair in your house? A broken table in your house? Anything that's housebroken? Well, don't try to fix it yourself. Don't ruin it. Bring it to Mel Blank. Let him do it. Right now in the fix-it shop, Mel's uncle is talking to our hero's general assistant, Zuki. Zuki, come here, will you? Well, I can't. I'm too busy. This is the, is the, is the, is the, is the, is the. Here I am. What time is it, Zuki? Well, according to me and my work clock, it's I can't tell you. Why can't you tell me? Well, because by the time I tell you what time it is, it's some other time. Come on, Zuki. Here come Mel and Betty. Let's get out of here. Look, darling, don't you see? The fix a chap will never amount to a thing as long as you let your Uncle Rupert and Zuki live with you. Well, gosh, honey, I have to let them stay here. Well, why can't that uncle of yours go to work? Well, he's still weak from his overseas shots. <laughs> overseas shots? Yeah, he got him in 1917. <laughs> he spent six months in Pierre's Bar and Grill in Paris. Twenty shots a night. <laughs> that I can almost believe. Oh, that's right. The last time he saw Paris, he didn't see it so good. Oh, Mel, why don't you try to be serious about business? Well, I try. And another thing, do you realize that we have been engaged now for five years? Gosh, our wooden anniversary. <laughs> don't you think we might begin toying with the idea of getting married? Oh, now, honey, you know I've been working on our nest egg. Well, we're both getting old, the egg and I. <laughs> well, yeah, but... Mel Blank, now this is what I'm talking about. Now, look. Look at this birthday card my father got from the Eternal Life Insurance Company this morning. Now, why don't you do something like that? Why don't you try to build goodwill? Okay. I'll send a birthday card to everybody in town who has a birthday this month. Oh, Mel, that's wonderful. And another thing. I'm going to talk to Uncle Rupert and put him straight. Oh, darling, it's so good to hear you talk like this. I'll tell Uncle. He'll just have to buckle down and, and loaf somewhere else. <laughs> I'm sorry, Uncle Rupert, but that's the way it's got to be. Melvin, my boy, I'm hurt. Haven't Zuki and I been everything to you? Well, not exactly. I haven't been everything to you? No. That's why I want to get married. <laughs> <laughs> 
You can't even cook. <laughs> well, anyway, my lad, let's not be hasty. I've got another idea. Why don't I go on living here and work for you? Oh, but Uncle Rupert, I can't afford to pay you anything. Oh, that's all right, nephew. After a while, you'll owe me so much money, I'll own the fix-it shop. Well, yeah, and Then but... you can go to work for me. Until you earn enough money to get it back. Say, both of us can make a darn good living like that for years. <laughs> we... we now wait. Doesn't hit you, eh? No. Uncle Rupert, you're not talking me out of this. I see what you mean. Well, Melvin, if this means the parting of the ways, I shall simply have to ask Widow Longnecker to marry me. Oh, but you said yourself marriage is a serious thing. Are you sure Mrs. Longnecker's your type? Why, of course Clara is my type. She's rich, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, but you should marry for love. Well, I love money. <laughs> But she's so long and lanky. Melvin, my lad, when a lady is that wealthy, she's not long and lanky. She's tall and stately. <laughs> well, have it your way. Now, will you send Zuki for those birthday cards? Indeed, I will. Oh, Zuki. Zuki, will you come here, please? Well, I can't. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Here I am. <laughs> Nell wants you to go down to City Hall and get a list of people's birthdays. Oh, well, uh, people's... Yeah. Then stop off on your way back and pick up some birthday cards in the five and ten. Yeah. Have you got that straight now? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm looking for the bee, the bee, the bee, the bee, the bee, the bee. I'm Young man, the bee, huh? This is the Bureau of Vital Statistics. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. We have records on everybody from the cradle to the grave. Records on men, records on women. Also, Spike Jones playing the gypsy. <laughs> what can I do for you? Well, I, I, I'm looking for the birthday, 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 you know, birthday, birthday, rock a bye, birthday, birthday, Hey, I bet you was a beautiful baby. <laughs> oh yes, indeed I was. Why, my mother used to. Oh, so that's it. You're expecting a baby. Oh, uh, how could I have a baby? A, a baby? Uh, I'm not even me, 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 me married. <laughs> well, you should have thought of that before. Marriage licenses are down the hall. <laughs> But I'm a confirmed bachelor. I don't believe in the. I'm put loose and fancy for the. Fancy. Nobody wants me. Now make up your mind what you want. Our files are complete from the cradle to the grave. We have the cross index to ZY, counter cross to AAL, and crisscross to YYZ. Ending with the fiscal year MCM XLV. Now what do you have? Uh, let me hear Spike Jones playing the gypsy. <laughs> I give up. Look, here's a list of everything we've got. You can take your pick. Oh, thanks. Hmm. Gosh. <laughs> this printing is sure close to the paper. <laughs> Is that you, Zuki? It's about time you... Oh, oh, it's you, Mrs. Longnecker. How are you today? Oh, me. Another day, another dividend. Oh, the woes of wealth. Well, what's the matter, Mrs. Longnecker? Oh, it's so annoying. I was at the bank all day today. You were? Yes. The bank wants to borrow some money from me. <laughs> but I'm not going to give it to them. Why not? They haven't paid the last loan I made them. If they don't pay me back soon, I'll just have to foreclose. I get more darn banks that way. <laughs> oh, money, money, money. Think of it, Melvin. I'm just swimming in wealth. What a beautiful way to drown. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Longnecker. Yes? Uh, were you born this month? Was I what? Were you born this month? Oh, oh, of course. I'm just out doing a little shopping for my mother who's still in the hospital. <laughs> Well, you see, I'm sending birthday cards from the fix-it shop to everybody in town who has a birthday this month. Well, what on earth for? Oh, it's a great business idea. Make a lot of money, so Betty will be proud of me. <laughs> money. Doesn't that fiancé of yours realize the terrible things money can do to a human being? Why, just look at me. Yeah, maybe I ought to warn her. <laughs> uh, do you think oh, that I... my dear Clara, this is indeed a pleasure. Well, I didn't come here to give you pleasure. 
What do you want, Rupert? I wish I could tell you how radiant you are, my dear. How like a tall, stately slapling. <laughs> sapling. <laughs> sapling in the breeze. <laughs> yes, I wish I could tell you, but I don't have the words. Well, considering you did it without words, it was okay. <laughs> Please, Rupert, I'm in no mood for your nincompoopity. <laughs> nincompoopity? Oh, oh, Melvin, I've quite forgotten what I came in for. I'm giving a reception tonight at the mansion, and I want you to come up and fix a loose floorboard on the front porch. A loose floorboard? Yes. Every time somebody walks into the house, the board comes up and slaps them in the face. Gee, that's embarrassing. It's even more embarrassing when they walk out. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Longnecker. <laughs> Well, Betty, all the birthday cards are mailed out. Oh, Mel, I can't wait to see what happens. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if someday I have to use a velvet rope to handle the crowds in front of the fix-it shop. Yes, honey. Why, the fix-it shop will become a household word. You know, like, uh, like, like Drano. <laughs> yes, darling. Can I see one of the cards? Oh, sure. Here. Oh, they're pretty. I see, it says, best wishes on this most joyous of all occasions, your very own natal day. Yeah, natal day. That means birthday. I looked it up. Now, wait a minute. What's this? What's what? Behind this little flap on the card. Look what it says. Oh, I didn't notice any flap. It says, I hope the gift I'm sending you under separate cover will brighten this most joyous of all occasions, your very own natal day. That, that means birthday. I... Oh, Mel, what did you do? I looked it up. <laughs> Don't you realize what this means? Oh, yeah. means I've got to get 98 birthday presents for all the people I sent cards to. Oh, if I don't, they'll never come near the fix-it shop. And you were going to keep the crowds back, with a velvet rope, no less. Well, I can still find use for the velvet rope. For what, for instance? Well, not everybody can afford to hang himself with a velvet rope. <laughs> How often it happens, you meet a man, and you think, he's a nice fellow, but... But what? Well, you hate to say it, but it's that little breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. And the chances are, this chap doesn't dream that a breath of trouble is tagging him, making him unpopular, hindering him in business, spoiling his fun. Without suspecting it, you may be the victim of unpleasing breath. So be on your guard against it. Just do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Okay. Okay, come here, please. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, don't take a ch 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 chance with your ever be, ever be, ever be, ever be romance. <laughs> oh, Mel, I wish I could think of some way to help you. Gosh, Betty, what am I going to do for presents for those people? I thought of everything. Well, it's no use worrying about it now. I guess something like this could happen to anybody. Yeah, but it always happens to me. Oh, Mel. Betty, you know you're the only girl in the world for me, don't you? Am I? You're the only girl who'll have me. <laughs> and and you're so pretty, too. You know, every morning I think of you while I'm shaving. <laughs> I'm glad. Sure. I look in the mirror and I say to myself, Gosh, you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, well, you you know what I mean. You're so sweet, and I'm such a worthless, brainless, shiftless, stupid, 
Gee, aren't you going to interrupt me? <laughs> oh, don't worry, darling. Everything will be all right. The world always has an opening for someone like you. You just have to find it. What do you mean, find an opening? Look at the hole I'm in now. <laughs> Melvin, my lad, your troubles are over. What do you mean, Uncle Rupert? In this big package, you see 100 beautiful boxes of candy. They'll make 100 most appropriate birthday presents for the people you sent the birthday cards to. Hey, that's swell, but where did you get them? It so happens I ran across a dear old friend today, one Harry Greenspagel, who now owns the Ace Novelty Company. Yeah? Ah, good old Greenspagel. Used to be a fellow vendor in a burlicue house in Hoboken. Uncle Rupert, I never knew you sold things in the burlesque house. Huh? Oh, <laughs> purely educational. Photographic knowledge for gentlemen who never went to college. <laughs> Postcards, to be exact. Postcards? Oui, oui. Ooh la la. Uncle Rupert. Oh, <laughs> inspirational views of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, let's get these boxes in the mail. Say... I'll be doing better than the life insurance company. They only sent out birthday cards to customers. The cheapskates. Yeah. I'll be sending bonbons by Greenspagel. De Paris. I guess this will show people in this town this isn't a melon I have for a head. That's right, Melvin. You've got brains in that melon. <laughs> Uncle Rupert, it was nice of you to get that candy for Mel. You know me, Betty. Unselfish to a fault. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, I don't understand it. We mailed that candy out two days ago, and we haven't received one thank you note. Not even a phone call. Oh, look, here comes Mrs. Longnecker. Ah, maybe this is my chance to win her hand. The one that signs the checks. <laughs> I have just one box of candy left. I'll try it on her and see how she likes it. Well, good luck to you. I'll leave you two alone. Ah, Clara, my dear. Uh, hello, Rupert. So glad you dropped in. Now, Rupert, I'm in no mood for your nincompoopity. <laughs> but, Clara, I have a beautiful gift for you. A gift for me? Oh, how nice, Rupert. Yes, a box of French bonbons, direct from Paris. Made by my very good friend, Monsieur Greenspagel. Oh, you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> oh, it's quite all right. A gift for the fairest of the fair. They come to you untouched by human hands. Greenspagel wrapped them himself. Well, I, I must open them immediately and try one. Try one of the peanut clusters. Oh, but these are not peanut clusters. These, these are ordinary peanuts. If I'd known you were coming, my dear, I'd have clustered them myself. Yes. Well, no, I think I'll try one of these caramels. Mmm! Mm. Delicious, aren't they, my dear? <coughs> Stop jumping up and down, Clara. <coughs> what the devil's the matter with her? Hey, Uncle Rupert, what happened to Mrs. Longnecker? Maybe she hasn't learned how to use her new upper plate. <laughs> Learn? What does she do, take lessons? Hey, what happened anyway? Hold on. What's this inside the candy box? What? Oh. Oh. Ace Novelty Company's number one joker. Be the life of the party. Treat your friends to sure pucker alum candy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 50 mirthquakes to a box. Laugh yourself to death. <laughs> There's been some mistake, nephew. Oh, some mistake is right. I can just see 98 people chasing me down the street, all of them yelling, Kill Bill Black! Kill Bill Black! <laughs> Melvin, take it easy, take it easy. What are you doing? <laughs> Can't you see? I'm laughing myself to death. Laughing! <laughs> Gosh, I feel awful. <laughs> Gosh, if only one of those people we sent the candy to would say something, if they'd only do something, why don't they? It takes a little time. A lawyer. Gee, 
I bet they could send me to the state penitentiary for doing this to people. They can't send you to a state penitentiary, Melvin. Of course they can. Using the mails to defraud is a federal offense. <laughs> state penitentiary and federal prison. You know what I'll have pinned on me? A two-way stretch. <laughs> Mel, now don't be silly. Hey, uh, 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 the mailman is coming. Oh, he's got uh, 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 loads of mail. Hey, uh, uh, you'd better leave by the back door, Mel. Yes, nephew, run for the hills. No, Uncle Rupert. I'm going to face the music. Well, well. <laughs> Quite a bit of mail for you today, Mr. Blank. Wait. All those boxes. It's the candy we set out. And those are all the birthday cards. Here, let me see. Hey. Hey, they all read the same way. Listen. Return to sender. Addressee deceased. That means dead. I looked it up. Huh? Say, now, I think I know what happened. Well, I wish you'd tell me. Don't you see? Zuki got the wrong list down at City Hall. Instead of birthday, he got the names of people who passed away. Oh. Then I'm safe. Nothing happened. That's right, and you can thank Zuki for that. Gosh, yeah. Gee, you saved my life, Zuki. I could kiss you. Hey, uh, you can't kiss me. Uh, don't you dare to uh, Don't you kiss. Uh. <laughs> he did. Well, we'll be back in the fix-it shop in just a minute for a Zookieism. What's a Zookieism? <laughs> Wait and see. Use Colgate tooth powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. Take it from me, that little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, can put the end in friendship or even give the air to a love affair. And the worst of it is, you may not even suspect it, because unpleasing breath can catch up with you without your knowing it. So ask yourself, could you be the victim of unpleasing breath? Guard against it this way. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate tooth powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate tooth powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, Zuki, we had quite an experience with those birthday cards. You know, Zuki, I like to feel that you learn something from it. Yes, Zuki, everything has a moral. Just what did you learn? Well, uh, to, do, to, do, to, do, to tell you the truth, I learned, I learned that, that anything worth it, to do, to do, to do, any, anything worth it, worth it, well, uh, you must keep your nose to the branch, to the branch, to the branch, to the, you gotta keep your nose to the branch, I learned that, <laughs> it's your pace to be ignorant. <laughs> Reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder, for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle, brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at the same time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. The Mel Blanc Show was written by David Victor and Herb Little Jr. and was produced and directed by Joe Ryan. Say hello to Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Halo lets hair sparkle with natural brilliance. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather that quickly carry away loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo Shampoo at any cosmetic counter. <laughs> Halo. 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. From Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle presents the Mel Blanc Show. Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Earl Ross, B. Benadera, Joe Kearns, Leora Thatcher, Zucky, and Victor Miller and his orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard Mel Blanc as the happy postman. Hello, Missy Burns. Here's your mail. Oh, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. You've heard him as the famous train caller. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. You've heard him as the lovable character, Zookie. Well, in the fix a chop, I'm the president of the... Uh, president of the... Uh, the I'm, I'm the vice president of the... Uh, I'm the vice president of the... Uh, I'm the treasurer of the... Uh, tra- uh, uh. I sweep out the place. You've heard him as the famous Warner Brothers cartoon character, Bugs Bunny. Eh. What's up, guy? Now hear him as the star in his own show. Hello, Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. You bend it, we mend it. Now let's drop in at Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop, where you're pretty sure to find things in an awful fix. Well, it seems that Mel's fiancée, Betty, has been dropping none too subtle hints about the need for efficiency in the fix-it shop. I wouldn't say that Uncle Rupert and Zookie are exactly moochers, but, well, they're more than just a little worried. Zuki, we have to show that we're efficient around here or else. So you'd better try working faster. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, 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 a quick, all right. See, I, I, I'm like a bolt of lightning. I'm, I'm a regular dynamo. dynamo <laughs> I think I blew a fuse. Zookie, here comes Mel. Quick, get busy. Hey, okay. Hello, Mel. What kept you so long? Oh, that Adams job was bigger than I expected. Her toaster wasn't the only thing Mrs. Adams broke. She broke her lawnmower and she broke her electric iron. I hope you presented the lady with a substantial bill. I couldn't. Mrs. Adams was broke, too. <laughs> oh, I see. Hey, Uncle Rupert, Betty's right. As a businessman, I'm a washout. We need a little efficiency around here. Just look at this place. It's a shambles. Oh, I don't know. It just has a sort of a lived-in feeling. Yeah, lived-in. I'm serious. Just look at that cigar butt on the floor. Is that yours, Uncle? No, my lad. You saw it first. (laughs) Stop kidding. Why, you are in a sour mood, nephew. Look. Why don't you get yourself a ticket for the girly review at the Gaiety tomorrow night? It'll cheer you up. Now, Uncle, have you seen the pictures of Fifi Divine the Star? Why, that gorgeous little lady has everything. And she carries it so well. <laughs> Uncle Rupert, you know I wouldn't waste a breath on any other girl but Betty. Why, Betty's the most wonderful girl. And... Hello there, sugar boy. I'm Fifi Divine. Oh, boy. <laughs> I thought you weren't going to waste a breath. On her, it wasn't wasted. Gosh, I feel better already. You've got a sign outside that says you can fix anything under the sun. I specialize in little jobs under the moon. (laughs) Look, Pop, get back to your funny papers. I'll talk to your straight man here. Uh, Well, what can I do for you, miss? Well, I'm the star of the pin-up girl review opening at the Gaiety Theater tomorrow night. Uh, You've been at the Gaiety, haven't you, sugar boy? Oh, sure. I go there practically every night. Why, Melvin? Well, it's the only place in town you can get Hershey bars. (laughs) Oh, you're cute. Look, sugar boy, you see this little gadget? I want you to fix it for me. Sure. It's just a little zipper. Oh, it's not just a little zipper. There's only one like it. It was made especially for me in my harem dance. Harem dance? Mm Mm-hmm. That's the one Anna didn't do for the King of Siam. <laughs> Why not? Did he have a weak heart? <laughs> you see, in my dance, the miracle zipper drops off one veil when I go like this, another one when I go like this, and another one when I go like this. <laughs> Look, Uncle, no hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, make sure you have my miracle zipper ready by tomorrow. Goodbye, sugar boy. Goodbye. Well, Mr. Vine, it just happens I'm going your way. Which way are you going? <laughs> Gee, 
Hello, sugar boy. Hello. Oh, oh, oh h- hello, Betty. Well, well, you see, there was something wrong with her zipper, so naturally, she thought of me. Huh. Uh, I didn't see you come in. Obviously. Oh, that, that was Fifi Divine, the glamorous dancer at the gaiety. Glamorous? Huh. I can't say she wears clothes very well. Wearing clothes isn't her specialty. <laughs> Never mind. I have something more important to talk to you about, Mel. I know, Betty. Efficiency. Yes. I finally found a man who will tell you how to run your business, what to buy, what to sell, and how much to charge. Gee, he must be from Washington. Well, he's an efficiency expert. Just came to town. Herbert Goodhue. Now, are you or are you not going to let me get a hold of him for you? Well, okay, honey. Uh, when will you get in touch with him? The day before yesterday. Oh, the day before... Huh? <laughs> yes, I wanted to make sure you wouldn't change your mind. Mr. Blank, I'm Herbert Goodhue, the efficiency expert. How do you feel? Well, I had a little cold... Who cares? Huh? That's your first lesson in efficiency, Blank. I've just known you a few minutes. How could I possibly care how you feel? But you ask me... Always get to the point. That's the good you speedy deedy way. Speedy deedy? Now, listen, Mr. Blank. I'll give you an example of what real efficiency can do for people. For instance, when Mrs. Goodhue and I converse, we use my famous peachy speechy system. Peachy speechy? Not a word wasted. For instance, if I want to compliment Mrs. Goodhue on a delicious dinner, I do not say, darling, the flounder was so delicious it simply melted in my mouth. You don't, huh? No, indeedy. That wouldn't be speedy, deedy. I leave out all the unimportant words and say, darling, flounder, mouth. (laughs) Well, I guess you can't get away with that as long as you say darling. What's that you're fooling with? Oh, I have to see about Miss Fifi's zipper. Uh, Well, what you do outside of business hours is no concern of the Goodhue Efficiency Program. Uh, Mr. Goodhue, I don't think you understand. I see I'll have to change your whole business approach. First of all... How do you say no to your customers? Oh, I just open my mouth and it rolls out. (laughs) When you say no, you've got to make people realize you mean it. Oh? I have proved that dogs and guinea pigs, that when you shake your finger in their faces and say no, spelling it out N-O, they react fastest. Well, what about the dogs and guinea pigs that can't spell? (laughs) Number two, another feature of my speedy deedy plan. Yeah? Look at this mad jumble here in your shop. (laughs) When I'm through, every time you turn around, you'll fall over just what you're looking for. It never fails. Do you sell accident insurance, too? (laughs) And number three, that's the hearty departy way of saying goodbye. Gosh, I better write all these things down. It's a goodbye with just a touch of hello in it, like this. Goodbye! (laughs) Gosh. That may sound like you're glad to see them go. Oh, you're a lucky man, Mr. Blank. When I'm through in your fix-it shop today, you'll be master of speedy-deedy, peachy-speechy, and hearty-departy. Okie-dokie. I mean, okay. (laughs) I'll do it for Betty. Ah, that's the old speedy-deedy. I'll do it even if it drives me (laughs) slappy-happy. You want me to fix this vase, Mrs. Otis? Yes, if you please, Melvin. Oh, you should see my little grandchild. Poor little fellow, he's teething. My daughter just has to keep burping him all the time. Who cares? Huh? What what was that? Speedy Deedy, Speedy Deedy. Mel Blank, you're much too old for baby talk. About your vase, the answer is no. No. N-O. No. I... I don't understand you. Funny dogs and guinea pigs understand. (laughs) Take your finger off of my face. I think you've gone mad. Give me back my vase. Okay, where is it? Oh! (gasps) My vase! My precious Chinese (laughs) vase! You see, another feature of the Speedy Deedy plan. Oh. You can't turn around without falling over just what you're looking for. It never fails. I'm getting out of here, but you're going to pay for that ball, and I'm going to tell everybody to stay away from this store. Oh, oh Mrs. Otis, I almost forgot. Hardy the party. Goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, Uncle Rupert, 
Mr. Goodhue's efficiency plan is ruining me. I lost three good customers already today. Four. Don't forget Mrs. Longnecker. My beloved Clara, the richest woman in town. Did she walk out too? Not before she slapped my face. But why? I decided to try Mr. Goodhue's peachy speechy system to propose marriage. You know, leave out all the unimportant words. Well? Why was I eloquent. I suggested I come and live with her in her mansion. Spend all our days together. Perhaps have a few little ones. Well, those are certainly honorable intentions. I meant them to be. But one of the unimportant little words I left out of my proposal was... Marriage. (laughs) What's going to happen next? I fixed Miss Fifi's zipper, but I can't find it anywhere. What? All this darn efficiency stuff. Oh, I'll ruin her career. She'll drag me into court. She'll sue me for every dollar I've got. I just hope Mr. Goodhue is satisfied. Now, now, Melvin. He and his speedy deedy, peachy speechy, hearty to party. He just left out the most important thing, that's all. What's that, nephew? Harry Carey. <laughs> How often it happens, you meet a man, and you think, he's a nice fellow, but... But what? Well, you hate to say it, but it's that little breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. The chances are, this chap doesn't dream that a breath of trouble is tagging him, making him unpopular, hindering him in business, spoiling his fun. Without suspecting it, you may be the victim of unpleasing breath. So be on your guard against it. Just do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, let's drop back again at Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop, where the new efficiency plan of Speedy Deedy, Peachy Speechy, and Hardy to Party has the morale very low in Deedy Weedy. Sookie, if Fifi sues Mel and he loses the shop, we'll be out on the street. Frankly, I'm worried. Oh, yes, yes, yes so am I. I'm uh, beside myself with it. If, 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 I'm beside myself with... I'm, I'm beside myself with... Hey, it's getting crowded in here. <laughs> There's only one chance. Mel is out somewhere trying to find something like that zipper right now. Gosh, I, I sure hope he finds it. Good Lord, here comes Fifi now. You talk to her, Zuki. Me, me? But don't tell her Mel lost that zipper. Don't let her pry it out of you. I'm leaving for the back door. Oh, uh, don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of her. I know what to uh, tell her. I know uh, just what I'm going to say. Hello, sugar boy. I'll say... My. My, you're cute. Who are you? <laughs> I'm as uh, as uh, 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 Zuki. I, I I work for Mel. Where is your boss? I came to pick up my zipper. Oh well, uh, me, Mel just stepped out for a me me uh, for a me me uh, me. He he'll be back in a couple of hours. Uh, 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 he'll be back in a few days. I think he got lost. Well, we don't need him, Zuki. Fifi just wants her zipper. Now tell, tell me where Mel left it. Come on, sugar boy. No. <laughs> oh, you can tell me anything. We're here all alone, aren't we? Uh, gee, just you and me. Mm-hmm. That's it, nice and cozy. <laughs> yeah, but, but I can always call for help. <laughs> We're all alone. And after all, you're a man, and I'm a woman. Well, uh, uh, let's leave it that way, huh? (laughs) Oh, 
I'm tired of this. You tell that pinheaded boss of yours, if I don't have that zipper for my show tonight, I'll sue him for every dollar he's got. Don't you butt me. Do you know what that zipper's supposed to do for me tonight? Oh, oh, oh sure. <laughs> Keep your shirt on. <laughs> Darling, I'm so sorry. This whole efficiency business is my fault. But I was just thinking of you. Oh, it's not you, Betty. It's just that I'm not good enough for you. Mel, don't you dare talk like that. Well, I know a couple of people who can't see why you want to marry me. Your mother and your father. Oh, darling. Your grandmother. <laughs> Uncle Emmett. Cousin Oliver. Darling. And then there's a couple of others. Mr. Thayer, the banker. Mr. Cooney, the traffic cop. Mr. Albernathy, the taxidermist. Oh, stop. My old scoutmaster. My landlady. The 4-H club. The American Legion. The Shriners. The UNO. <laughs> oh, darling, you're such a fool. But I do love you. And I love you too, Betty. I'll get out of this somehow. I'll just keep a stiff lower lip. <laughs> Mel, the expression is upper lip. Well, can I help it if it's my lower lip that's trembling? <laughs> You'll be here any minute, Uncle Rupert. I don't know what else I can do. I just can't find her zipper. Well, nephew, don't worry. If worst comes to worst, I'll go out and get a job. Gosh. I'd hate to see you spoil your record. <laughs> oh, my gosh, here comes Dr. Crabb, the veterinarian. He would come at a time like this. Never mind, my lad. I'll take care of that canine kill there. Oh, thanks, Uncle. <laughs> I'll go and take one last desperate look around. Well, hello, Christopher. How's the dog doctor this morning? Consulting veterinarian, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. <laughs> Ought to catch in my throat. <laughs> uh, could I have a pan of water, please? <laughs> Christopher, do you realize you're even getting to sound like a dog? Why, thank you, Rupert. Dog is man's best friend. <laughs> In fact, I understand them. You understand what dogs say? Why, certainly. I have a little Pekingese. When he looks up at me with his big watery eyes and says, uh, rawr, rawr, rawr. You know what that means? He's hungry. Oh, somebody must have told you. <laughs> but dogs are wonderful. <laughs> Uh, when my little cocker spaniel goes over to meet my great Dane, he says, rawr, rawr, rawr. and then the great Dane says, rawr, rawr, rawr. and then that little cocker, <laughs> the big Dane, he says, <laughs> and what does that mean? I don't know, but they sure understand each other. <laughs> Oh, please go away. Yeah, I must be going now. But remember, elephants need your sympathy, especially adults. They blow their nose and wait so long until they get results. <laughs> well, bye. <laughs> I know, Miss Devine. I but... should be over at the theater right now, but I can't go on. What am I going to dance in, my girdle? Mmm, that ought to be snappy. <laughs> hey, that's what I'll do. I got it. I got it. Now, what are you doing? No, don't push all those things off the counter. Have you gone crazy, man? Now, you stay out of this, Mr. Good, you. Uncle Rupert, throw those nuts and bolts where they belong. Yeah, that's right. Right there in the sink. And all this goes back where it was, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
that does it. Mel, what have you done? Goodness, the fix-it shop's a shambles. Everything just the way it was yesterday morning. The same mess. The same mess? Are you sure, Mr. Goodhue? I exactly should know. The same? I should know. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Darling, where are you going? To get Miss Fifi's zipper. Now that everything's in order again, I know just where it is. Here, you see? It was inside Mrs. Zabrowski's zither. You know, Z for zither and Z for zipper. Oh, let me have that zipper. I've got to run to the theater. A- and to show you there's no hard feelings, I'll bring my car around for you to fix. Well, what's wrong with your car? Uh, you know me, sugar boy. I strip the gears. <laughs> <laughs> so long. Something else I can do for you, Mr. Blank. Mr. Goodhue, the answer is no. No? N-O. That spells no. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Goodhue. You know, hearty to party. Goodbye! <laughs> For a Zookieism. What? You never heard of a Zookieism? Well, hang around. Use Colgate tooth powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. Look, let's face the facts. A little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, is no respecter of persons. Girl or woman, man or boy, teamster or tycoon, debutante or duchess, all are possible victims of unpleasing breath. Why, even you, though you don't suspect it, may risk your happiness, ruin your romance, even jeopardize your job because of unpleasing breath. So isn't it best to be on your guard, to watch out for that little breath of trouble? My advice is do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date, with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. Remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. Well, Suki, we've had a lot of excitement, but I hope you learned something about efficiency. Yes, Suki. To be efficient, you should score yourself on things like ingenuity, perseverance, industry. How would you score yourself? Uh, well, on ingenuity, ingenuity, I, I, I score for five. Uh, yeah. Uh, on perseverance, I score it. Uh, 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 on industry, I score it. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know what the score is. This is Bud Easton reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blank Show every Tuesday at the same time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blank's Fix It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo for naturally bright and beautiful hair. Remember, even finest soaps and soap shampoos hide the natural luster of your hair with dulling soap film. But Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather, quickly banishes loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar in. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo Shampoo at any cosmetic counter. Mel Blanc's show was written by David Victor and Herb Little Jr. and was produced by Joe Ryan. Say hello to Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Halo lets hair sparkle with natural brilliance. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather to quickly carry away loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar in. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter.
Ladies, help out by taking your used kitchen fat to your butcher. He'll pay you four cents a pound. Sell him a can of fat this week for sure. From Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle presents the Mel Blanc Show. Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Earl Ross, Dee Benedaret, Leora Thatcher, Zookie, and Victor Miller and his orchestra. You've heard Mel Blanc is the happy postman. Hello, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. You've heard him as the famous train caller. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. <laughs> You've heard him as the lovable character, Zookie. Well, in the fix-it shop, I'm the... I'm the vice president. I'm the treasure. I sweep out the place. <laughs> You heard him as the famous Warner Brothers cartoon character, Bugs Bunny. What's up, guy? Now hear him as the star in his own show. Hello, Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. You bend it, we mend it. Say, folks, does your vacuum cleaner vic when it should vac? Does your clock tock when it should tick? Well, why not bring them to Mel Blank, who can make anything work, except his Uncle Rupert? We find Mel on the phone. Hello, Mel Blank's Fix-It Shop. You bend it, we mend it. Uh, recharge your storage battery? Oh, the battery in your hothouse for the plants. Oh, I won't forget. I'm making a note of it right now. Put amps in plants. <laughs> and goodbye. Say, nephew, I hope you haven't forgotten we're all going to the county fair tomorrow. Gosh, no, Uncle Rupert. Why, Zookie here is starting to dress up for it already. Suki, where did you get that high, stiff collar? It's eight inches high if it's an inch. Yes, my lad. It can't possibly be comfortable. Oh, it's a uh, comfortable, uh, comfortable, uh, comfortable, all right. You see, it, it doesn't bother me a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. <laughs> but every time I, I hiccup, my head disappears. <laughs> Oh, for the love of heaven. Look, Uncle, here comes Betty. Take Zuki in the back of the shop and get that thing off his neck, <laughs> yes, huh? come on, Zuki. come on. Hello, Betty. Oh, Mel, I'm so excited about the county fair tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah. Gee, I hope we have as much fun as we did last year. Hey, remember the tunnel of love? Uh-huh. Betty, this time, let's get seats together. <laughs> oh, silly. But now, tomorrow, I think I may have a surprise for you. Surprise? Yes. What would you say if I won the cake baking contest at the fair? Well, honey, I, I'd say, uh, gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I can win. I'm using Mother's prize-winning recipe. I want to show you what a good cook I am. You know, I think sometimes girls pay too much attention to their looks. After all, men prefer girls who can cook, too. Oh, I don't know. I've heard fellas say, boy, has she got a shape. But I never heard them say, boy, has she got recipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the same, Mr. Blank. You'll be getting a good cook when we're married. If we're ever married. Oh, gosh, honey, I want us to get married soon. Go ahead, you just name the day. Now, we have named the day four times already. Huh? Oh, yeah. Now if we could only decide on the year. <laughs> oh, honestly, darling, you, you should become more serious about your business. Now, now, now remember, now be businesslike. All right. Hello, Mel Blank's Fix-It Shop. You bend it, we mend it. Who? Oh, the Y. Oh, it, it's the Y, honey. Oh. Hello? Yeah? Do I know how to get to the Y? Sure. I was there last week with a friend, and we had a swim and a rub down together. It, it, wait. L look, look. Hey, hey, please, I, I only meant... What's the matter, darling? It's the YWCA. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll be right over. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> what a businessman. What'd they want? Oh, they want me to fix an oven. Uh, I'll go over and land all their fix-it business. Just for you. Ah, uh, that's the way I like to hear you talk. I'll go down there and really sell myself. They won't be able to say no to me about anything. Remember, darling, it's the YWCA. Huh? 
Oh, well, almost anything. <laughs> Now, ladies of the cooking class, that will be all for now. You baked some lovely cakes today. And remember, the one I think is best is going to represent the YWCA at the county fair tomorrow. Well, come back later, girls, and I'll announce the winner. <laughs> uh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. Goodness, a man! Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm Mel Blank. What can I do for you, young man? I'm Stanhope, the cooking teacher. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Stanhope? Miss Stanhope. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. You're sorry. <laughs> well, if you'll show me the oven, I'll get right to work. I told the secretary I'd start right in. This is odd. Very odd. Oh, I do a lot of odd jobs. I must take this up with the membership committee. Well, there's your stove right there. Thanks. And you'll find all the ingredients for baking a cake. Me? Bake a cake? Please, but... please, you were late to start with, so get to your pots and pans. But... Young man, the secretary sent you here, didn't she? Yeah, but... Well, very well, then. Start baking. I'll be back later to see how it turns out. Extremely odd. Unheard of. Hey, just a minute. I... I... Gosh, what does she want me to do? Bake a cake to prove I can fix an oven? <laughs> what a silly way to run a place. Boy, am I glad I joined the YMCA. <laughs> what do I know about cooking? Well, here goes for you, Betty. <laughs> Gosh, I'm following the recipe on this box, but I'm not getting anywhere. It says break six eggs, beat till stiff. That's silly. Some people get stiff quicker than others. Now add a level teaspoon of vanilla. <laughs> Whoever heard of a level teaspoon? The stuff would roll off. Now before putting in cake, stand near open window and cool off. Cool off? I don't even feel warm. Ah, oh, this is silly. This batter won't even stick together. Hey, wait a minute. Nobody's going to eat this cake. I know what'll make it stand up. Yes, sir, I'll mix in a little putty. Ladies, ladies, come here to Mr. Blank's stove. This marble cake is a work of art. Why, it looks just as though it was modeled out of clay. However did you do it? Oh, I just stuck a few things together. But now do I get the job? You certainly do. Swell. Even though it's a bitter blow to all of us girls, a man is going to represent the YWCA at the county fair. You and your beautiful cake. Oh, thanks. Betty will be... What? Yes, that's right. Oh, but you can't. You, you, you don't know what I put into it. Oh, now, now, your recipe is your own precious secret. Oh, this is silly. I don't know how to cook. No false modesty, Mr. Blaine. But I tell you, Not I... a word now. I'll see you in the fair. <laughs> oh, gosh. I hate to think what'll happen if Betty hears about this. I started out to be a serious, dignified businessman. And now I'm a... A male prudence penny. <laughs> a penny that feels just like two cents. Use Colgate tooth powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. When two is company, take it from me, a breath of trouble is very NG. Yes, indeed, that little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, may ruin your romance, even jeopardize your job. Yet anyone can be the victim of unpleasing breath, even you. Just do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten... Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate tooth powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate tooth powder with the accent on powder. 
Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate and tooth powder. Well, when it comes to getting into trouble, Mel takes the cake. In this case, the beautiful cake he made with the aid of a little putty. We find Uncle Rupert trying to understand just what happened to Mel. Let me get this straight, Melvin. Your cake is going to represent the YWCA at the fair? But I tell you, Uncle Rupert, I was an innocent dupe. Dupe? That's a strange pronunciation. <laughs> oh, I tried to explain to Miss Stanhope, but she wouldn't listen. You should have made her listen, my lad. You could have done it. You've got something on the ball. Yeah. Yeah, I've got something on the ball. A great big number eight. <laughs> ah, look. Here comes Mrs. Longnecker down the street. My beloved Clara. So what? So everything, my lad. Don't you know she's the honorary judge at the cake contest tomorrow? She is? I'll just explain this culinary comedy of errors, and she'll make sure your name isn't even mentioned. You know, I can mold Clara like putty in my hands. <laughs> What's the matter? What's the matter? <laughs> putty. Putty, don't ever mention that word. <laughs> ah, Clara, my dear, it's good to see you. You're as radiant Rupert, as... Rupert, you're getting fat. I... Huh? <laughs> I think I carry my weight rather well, my dear. You don't carry it, you drag it. <laughs> How are you feeling today, Mrs. Longnecker? Oh, I'm so weary, Melvin. I spent the whole day trying to find a suitable safe deposit box for my money. And would you believe it, in this whole town, there was only one that would do. Well, that's good. But I can't use it. Why not? There's a family living in it now. <laughs> oh. Oh, money, money, money. My millions cause me nothing but misery. I'd be glad to share your misery, my dear. <laughs> Please, Rupert, none of your nincompoopity. <laughs> nincompoopity. Well, excuse me, Mrs. Longnecker, I've got something to do. Oh, uh, Uncle, don't forget to ask uh, you-know-what. What? What? What, 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 Rupert? Well, my dear, tomorrow at the fair, when you're judging the cake, if you happen to come across one with Melvin's name on it... Melvin! Melvin baked a cake! Well, it's a long story, but would you... Would I? Oh, you want me to see that Melvin's cake wins. You want me to open my big, generous heart and say yes. On the contrary, my dear, I want you to open your big, generous mouth and say no. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant was... You're positively <laughs> insulting. Good day. <laughs> Hey, how'd you make out, Uncle Rupert? Is she going to do anything about my cake? Uh, I'm afraid not, nephew. Oh, but you well, said... Well, for all you know, Betty might be glad to know that you're a good cook. Oh, I'm a good cook, all right. A wonderful cook. I'm the only one in the world who can bake a cake and cook his own goose at the same time. <laughs> What would happen, well, just suppose, for instance, uh, a man won the cake contest today. A man? Oh, don't be ridiculous, darling. No man would enter a cake contest at the fair. Oh, he wouldn't, huh? What's the matter with you, darling? You seem so nervous. Uh, look, honey, I know I make a lot of mistakes, but I keep trying to improve myself because, well, because I love you. I know. Oh, Melvin, may I see you a moment? Oh, pardon me, Betty. I'll see what Uncle Rupert wants. Nephew, your worries are over. Your old uncle is going to take care of that confounded cake. Now look, it's almost time for the contest. Do anything. Have you seen Zookie around? No, but there's Dr. Crab, the dog doctor. Maybe he has. I'll see you later. Dr. Crab, that dried-up dog doctor. Oh, well. Oh, Christopher, have you seen Zookie? Zookie? No, Rupert, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. <laughs> Just got a catch in my throat. <laughs> Could I have a pan of water? <laughs> Christopher, you're even getting to sound like a dog. Oh, thank you, Rupert. No, I don't feel so good today. <laughs> Would you see if my nose is cold? <laughs> oh, you're okay. Surprising that you managed to tear yourself away from those dogs. Yeah, I love my dogs. Man's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes it takes me hours just to give them dinner. What do you do? Feed them one by one? Yep. To each his bone. <laughs> 
For well, some time... Look, Christopher, I'm in a hurry. I've got to find Zookie. You know, they're judging the livestock here today. My cow could have been the best cow in the show, but there was a blot on her record. <laughs> Your cow had a blot on her record? Yeah. Those milk people once fired her for being discontented. <laughs> Please, please, go away, go away. All right, Rupert. But remember, a cow has the kind of shape that gives us many laughs. Her thighs are bad, her ankles worse. But she sure has pretty calves. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Zookie, I thought I'd never find you. Yeah, I'm sure glad you did. I was lost. <laughs> now listen carefully. Nell is in trouble. One of us has to sneak into that tent where the cakes are. It will be, 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 yeah. One of us has to eat up Nell's cake. Every last crumb of it. Last cake, 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 yeah. One of us has to take the chance of being caught and thrown out. It's a feet, throw, it's a feet, no. But Zookie, it's for Mel. Oh, <laughs> uh, we, why didn't you say so? Mm, yes, yes, some uh, me, uh, me, me, marble cake. <laughs> uh, be, uh, be very tasty. <laughs> uh, I think I uh, just swallowed one of the marbles. <laughs> Uh, this just hits the, uh, the spot. <laughs> I wish it didn't hit so hard. Zookie! Huh? Oh, and let me... Long neck. What are you doing? Don't tell me you're eating Melvin's cake. Okay. <laughs> I won't tell you. Put that cake down. I'm, I am, as, as fast as I can. <laughs> oh, do you know what you've done? That was the YWCA entry in the contest. I'm going to take you to the fair officials at once. I'm going to take you there if I have to carry you. Well, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all through. Gosh. <laughs> I'll have to be carried. <laughs> It'll just be a minute now, dear, before Mrs. Longnecker announces the winner. Yeah. Oh, darling, I've got a hunch I'm going to win. Mel, aren't you glad I'm a good cook? After we're married, you'll be well fed. Yeah. My dad used to say, just get married, son, and you'll soon get fed up. What? Oh, well, I didn't mean... Oh, oh, there's Mrs. Longnecker now. Ladies and gentlemen, there were two cakes tied for first place in the contest. One made by Betty Colby. Darling, my cake. The other representing the YWCA. Oh, no. Unfortunately, the YWCA cake was destroyed completely. Hooray! Mr. Blank, please. But just because that cake was destroyed, it made up my mind. A young man passing by could not resist it. He ate every last crumb of it. Yes, that's what this boy Zuki did. Zuki, oh! Obviously, a lovable American boy is a better judge of cake than I am, and so I award the Domestic Science Cup to Mel Blank. <laughs> Mel, Mel, what does this mean? I I've got to go. Where are you going, Mel? Uh, I think I smell my fudge burning. <laughs> Come out from under that counter. Oh, I was just looking for Zuki. Well, you won't find him there. Oh, but you don't understand. I'm worried about him. Anything might have happened to him, Betty. Why don't you worry about what happened to me? I was never so embarrassed. Oh, I know, honey. Gosh, I'm sorry. That catty Muriel Graves wanted to know if I still loved you, even with your dish pan hands. <laughs> oh. And Mr. Thurston, president of your lodge, stop me and... Yeah, I know. He's going to transfer me to the ladies' auxiliary. <laughs> Well, here's the cup you won with your own little hand. Well, go on, read the inscription. Well, okay. Ah, oh, no. Go on, read it, read it. Go on. To the kitchen queen, <laughs> who's sure to make some man an ideal wife. <laughs> and I have to be engaged to Miss Kitchen Queen of 1946. Oh, gee. And you were going down to the YWCA to get their business. I got the business. 
Well, won't you let me explain? I went to the YWCA to fix an oven, but Miss Stanhope made me bake a cake. <laughs> The only reason my cake looked like anything at all is because I put putty in it to make it stand up. You... Oh, now, putty. Oh, darling. Well, it's no laughing matter. Zuki ate it. For all I know, the poor kid may be in the hospital right now. Oh, no wonder you were so worried about Zuki. Hey, uh, did, did, did somebody call me? Oh, Zuki, are you all right? Hey, maybe we ought to call a doctor, huh? Oh, yeah, Zuki, how do you feel? Oh, I, I feel uh, fine. I feel uh, great. I, I was uh, singing all the way home. Singing? Yeah, it's the it's, it's cement mixer, putty putty. <laughs> We'll be back in a minute for a Zookieism. What's a Zookieism? Oh, wait and see. Use Colgate tooth powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. Young man, have you wondered why opportunity stays away from your door? Perhaps a little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, has caught up with you. It's best to be on your guard. So do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, Zuki, we had quite a mix-up at the fair today. I'd like to feel you profited by it. Yes, my lad. It should have taught you what people should do to stay out of trouble. What should they do? Well, uh, the, the, uh, 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 stay out of trouble, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, the, uh, uh, people should uh, li- look before they uh, li- 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 uh, uh, People should mind their uh, peas and uh, 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 people should uh, li- uh, <laughs> let them eat cake. <laughs> Reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath of sweet and pizza sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at the same time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet at Mel Blanc Fix It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Halo lets hair sparkle with natural brilliance. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather to quickly carry away loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar in. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. The Mel Blanc Show was written by David Victor and Herb Little Jr. and was produced and directed by Joe Ryan. Ladies, here are some hard facts about soap, about all kinds of soap. Laundry, bath, flakes, toilet soap, all the precious stuff that lathers and cleans. You're not getting nearly as much soap as you need because the soap makers aren't getting nearly as much fat as they require. It's due to the worldwide shortage of fats and oil. One terrible cause of this shortage is the famine in so many parts of the world. So we cannot expect any great increase in the imports of fats and oils for a long time. It means we have to make up the shortage ourselves. If you want to see products like soap, nylons, and the other badly needed articles in more plentiful supply, do help supply the fats needed to make them. Save and sell every ounce of used kitchen fat. Your grocer will pay you four cents a pound. (laughs) This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You've heard Mel Blank as the happy postman. Hello, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. <laughs> My Mrs. Burns, remember? Smile. <laughs> You've heard him as the famous train caller. Hey, leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. 
Come on, girls. <laughs> You've heard him as the lovable character Zuki. Well, in, in the picture shop, I'm the president of the uh, president of the uh, I'm the vice president of the uh, I'm the treasurer of the treasurer. Uh, treasure, uh, treasure. <laughs> I sweep out the place. <laughs> You've heard him as the famous Warner Brothers cartoon character, Bud Bunny. What's that, guy? Now hear him as the star in his own show. Hello, Mel Blanc's Fix It Shop. You bend it, we mend it. <laughs> now let's drop in at Mel Blanc's Fix It Shop. Ladies. Does your husband's blood boil when you ask him to fix the electric coaster? Hmm? Does he act bored when you ask him to mend the ironing cord? Hmm? Does he threaten to go home to father when you put him to all this bother? Well, does he? That's what I thought. You can put an end to all this if you get to know Mel Blank, who can make anything run smoothly except his romance with Betty. Gosh, Betty, we always seem to be fighting. Mel, I'm not really fighting with you. I love you. Don't you know that when two people are in love, there's bound to be a little fighting? If Joe Lewis and Moriello weren't in love very long, were they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mel, you're such a fool. Oh, thanks, Betty. <laughs> Gosh, you know I mean well. I know it, but you kept me waiting three hours last Saturday while you were fixing Mrs. Allen's lawnmower. Well, it was a big job. But you weren't satisfied just fixing the lawnmower. You had to trim the hedges and mow the lawn. And then... Yeah? What did you charge it? Fifty cents. <laughs> the idea of charging anything like that. Well, honey, these people just have to get used to paying through the nose. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. You see, you're just not a good businessman. Take yesterday's job on Mrs. Nelson's baby carriage. You were paid specifically to fix the hood. But no, you weren't content. You had to change the wheels and the tires and the color. Is there anything you didn't change? I didn't change a baby. <laughs> now, now, I'm serious. Now, look, my father discovered a leak in the water heater, and I think I talked him into letting me fix it. Oh, that's swell, honey. I'll get my kit and go right over. Oh, no, not so fast. He's coming over here himself. He still only has half a mind to hide it. Oh, that's all right. I've never been hired by anybody with half a mind before. <laughs> oh, Mel, don't you see? This is your chance to impress us. Oh, don't worry about us. Your father and I have a perfect understanding. You do? Sure. There's nothing he wouldn't do for me, and there's nothing I wouldn't do for him. That's the way it's been for five years. We hadn't done a thing for each other. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, darling, look, instead of just fixing the leaf, convince him you're the one to do all the repairs around the house. Oh, that's easy to say, but every time your father opens his mouth, I, I put my foot in it. I, I mean, well, all I know is somebody's foot is in somebody's mouth, and, well, it's not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your trouble is you're not firm enough. When you're talking to him about the house, stand up to father. You're right, Betty. That's the spirit. I'll stand up to him and say, listen, Mr. Colby, your foundation is loose. Your frame is out of shape. You should do something about that bay window in the front. Honey, that's wonderful. Boy, is he a mess. No. <laughs> no, I mean the house. But anyway, if your father tries to interrupt me, I won't let him get a word in edgewise. Oh, darling, here comes father. Now, don't forget to search yourself. Be firm. Don't worry, honey. As soon as he walks through that door, I'll be on him like a tiger. Mr. Colby? Well, what is it? <laughs> Would you be put out if I told you there's something wrong with your house? <laughs> I've been trying to put that certain something out for the past five years. Any luck? I mean, uh... Father, that's not fair. Mel's really got some wonderful ideas. Well, let him get to the point. You forget I manage a supermarket. I'm a busy man. Now, <laughs> what do you intend doing to my house and why? Well, first thing, I'd remove that tall, skinny thing you see as soon as you enter. And what's wrong with Mrs. Colbert? <laughs> No, I, I mean that old-fashioned hat rack. Oh, nonsense. Father, this is such a good time to fix the house while Mother's away visiting and Cousin Gussie's due any day for her yearly visit. Oh, your mother's cousin. <laughs> yes, please. Well, ever since your mother and I have been married, dear Cousin Gussie has been coming to the house in September and hibernating until April. <laughs> Gosh, September till April. All the months with an R in it. Is she a cousin or an oyster? Oh, that's a good one. 
Uh, oh, I'd give anything to keep that woman away. And you, you want me to fix the place over for her. Please, Daddy. Oh, all right. Make up an estimate. I'll be back around noon. In the meantime, you go over to the house and fix that leak. Okay, Mr. Leak. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Corby. Goodbye. Come on, baby. Oh, I'm proud of you, darling. I'll see you later. I'm coming, Father. Goodbye. Boy, I guess I told him. Now i got to show him. Oh, Uncle Rupert. What is it, nephew? Sorry I'm late. Took me a little longer than usual combing my hair this morning. Well, you still haven't got it on straight. <laughs> <laughs> I must do something about that crack in the mirror. I will get my pot in the wrong place. <laughs> well, listen, Uncle Rupert. We've got to fix a leak in Mr. Colby's hot water heater. Now, will you take Zuki and get over there in the pickup truck? The pickup truck. I'd like to see you get rid of that thing. But why? Well, I could pick up much more in a shiny new station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cut it out. Hey, now look. When you're through with that leak, be sure to tidy up the cellar, mop up the floor, and wash the window. Shall I put a big red bow on the oil burner? Yeah, put a big... <laughs> oh, look, Uncle. Why do I have to go? Why can't your brilliant assistant, Zuki, take care of it? Uncle, I don't want Zuki to go over and ball things up by himself. I want you to help him. <laughs> oh, you want me to help Zuki ball things up? Oh, stop, kid. Now get going, will you? Okay. Oh, Zuki, Zuki, come here. We have a little job to do. Well, I, I'm all this bit tired of. Uh, um, I'm, I'm completely bit tired of. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I just untied myself. <laughs> come on, let's get going. Zuki, if you work real hard, someday you may be a partner in the fix it shop. Um, me? Uh, a partner? Oh, uh, that'd be uh, uh, that'd be it would be wonderful. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> I couldn't afford it. No, Blank, I'm in a hurry. Just what is it you want to do to my house? Well, Mr. Colby, that door that leads to the back porch, that should be put on the entrance to the parlor so people can get a little privacy. Huh. So you and Betty can have privacy. The lollydoddle. Lollydoddle. Hey, what? Oh, uh, pardon me, Mr. Colby. Make it snappy. I'm in a hurry. Oh, yes, sir. Hello, Mel Blank's fix it shop. You bend it. We mend it. Oh, Melvin, this is Uncle Rupert. I'm at the Colby house, and I wanted to check up on what we were to do here. Well, Uncle, I told you what to do. And Mel's plans look too complicated. Oh, no, it's easy. All you have to do is take that door off the back porch and put it on the entrance to the parlor. Then knock out that small window over the sink and make it larger. Anything you say, Mel. Goodbye. Huh? Oh, oh goodbye, Uncle Rupert. Now, look, Mr. Colby, this is really a very simple problem. Okay. I just can't believe that Mel wants us to change those doors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mel knows what he's doing. You know, if, if someday he, he's going to be a captain of industry, the industry. He'll be a lieutenant. He'll be a, 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 a sergeant. A, a sergeant. <laughs> he's going to have a door marked private. <laughs> Dickie, I'd better get on the phone again and check. We can't afford to make any mistakes on this job. Mel Blank, fix the shop. You bend it. We mend it. Melvin, your voice has changed. Oh, Uncle Rupert, this is Daddy. Mel's busy. Do you know what Mel wants to have done in your house? Oh, yes. He, he's just discussing with Father. He wants to take the door off the back porch and put it in the parlor and make the kitchen window bigger. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Well, thanks. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, did you find out uh, what we have to do? Yes, and I don't understand it, but Mel and Betty say that we have to change the door from the back porch to the parlor and put a big window in over the sink. Well, let's get busy. We really have to knock this place apart. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> It'll be, uh, this ought to be fun. <laughs> Well, Mel seems to be getting nowhere with his plans for Betty's father's house, but through a misunderstanding over the telephone, Uncle Rupert and Zucky have literally torn the Colby house apart. Neither Mel or Mr. Colby has any idea what's happened. Hey, this ought to be good. Pardon me while I listen. Gosh, Betty, it'll be swell if your father lets me make these alterations on his house. Yes, darling. You know, honey, when I was working on the plans, I got to thinking of the home we're going to have someday. Did you, darling? Uh-huh. And a funny thing, I saw an ad in the paper offering just the kind of a deal for us. 
It said two-bedroom honeymoon cottage near transportation and shopping district, a unit heat, unhampered view, $40 a month. Oh, well, that sounds too good to be true. Where is it? 916 Pine Street, Ketchikan, Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously, I've been thinking of a cottage like that ever since we first met. Do you remember the first time we met? Do I? Do you remember the first kiss? Yes. I can still feel it burning on my forehead. <laughs> well, I didn't want to sweep you off your feet. <laughs> Oh, Mel, darling, I think this is the turning point for you. Yeah, after I tie up this job, there'll be bigger ones. And before you know it, I'll, I'll get a cash register. Yeah. You know, you have to learn to blow your own horn a little bit. What do you mean? Well, when you're working at our house, put a sign out. This renovation job by Mel Blank. Oh, yeah. Sure, everybody takes credit for his work. For instance, when an artist is through, he always signs his name. Whistler, Michelangelo, Rembrandt. Yeah, and Kilroy. <laughs> Why, everybody who sees that sign will go around saying, that job is Mel Blank. That's Mel. Gee, that sounds great. That Mel. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Look here, are you sure you know how to fix that water pipe? Why, do I? I? I was a top-ranking student in the school of Bittler. Uh, Bittler. <laughs> I, I was the highest-ranking engineer. engineer. I was the class valedictorian. Boy, am I a dunce. <laughs> As I see it, all that's needed is a couple of new walls. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, that won't work. There's too much air, air, air pressure. I'll have to bend the pipe. Go ahead and bend it. And you bend it by yourself. Oh, easily. And, and now watch. I'll, I'll just uh, uh, pull a little like this on the rear end. It will be clean. Well, I, I'll just uh, 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 force the... <laughs> I'll just give it a little... <laughs> hey, you got a stick of dynamite in the house? <laughs> Gookie, please hurry. That leak is getting the floor all wet. Oh, oh don't worry about the, uh, the floor being wet. When I get through with this pipe, I, uh, the place will look like the Sahara. It'll look like the Mojave. It'll look like it's uh, <laughs> Niagara Falls. <laughs> well, Mr. Colby, what do you think about my plans for your house? Is it all right for me to go ahead? No. No? That's what I said, and oh, no. But why, Mr. Colby? Now, look, I don't want to argue about it now. You're coming to the house tonight for dinner. We'll discuss it further then. Okay, Mr. Colby. Ready, and I'll pick you up here in about an hour. Now, you be ready. I don't like to be kept waiting. Okay, Mr. Colby. <laughs> Zookie! Yes, Uncle Rupert. Well, the leak is fixed, the window is knocked out over the sink, and the door is off the back porch. Is it the be that back here to be that, uh, yeah. Well, I guess that's all we can do today. Let's go home. Oh, oh you can't. Hey, we forgot to put the, uh, the hinges on the door in the in the parlor. It'll fall down. Don't worry about the parlor door. We'll put the hinges on tomorrow. <laughs> but it'll fall down and, and hit someone. Zookie, nobody's going to touch it. Now, take this stuff out of the truck. I'll pack my pizza. Okay, I'm going. This is my hacksaw, my wrench, wire. Oh, I'll put every, 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 what does he want? Well, he wants a Jesus. Okay, I'm... <laughs> Hello, Christopher. How's the dog doctor today? Consultant veterinarian, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. <laughs> Just got a catch in my throat. <laughs> Could I have a pan of water? <laughs> well, what's on your mind? 
Well, I saw the fix-it shop truck outside and thought you'd save me a trip. I want Mel to fix his dog collar. Anything else? No. From a new female hound dog from Mississippi. My, how she handles that big Boston bull who comes to court in a... <laughs> Funny thing, she won't have anything to do with that big Boston bull. She's choosy, eh? Yes, she just won't take any bull. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Yep, and that same female hound from Mississippi is just the same about all the other male dogs. Just wraps him around her little paw. <laughs> what has this canine Cleopatra got, anyway? They all love her accent, Rupert. Accent? Yes. All she has to say is, <laughs> You all? <laughs> Christopher, we were just leaving. Oh, glad you reminded me so much. But remember, horses listen to their ma and never talk to a stranger. You don't hear silver shout. Hi, old Lone Ranger. Smile, <laughs> <laughs> Rupert. It was swell of you to invite me to your house to dinner, Mr. Colby. Oh, we were glad to have you, Mel, aren't we, Father? Uh huh. Oh, oh, sure. Yes, yes. We're glad to have you. Well, let's get into the house where I can relax. I'm tired. Holy terrors! Who tore that hole in the side of my house? Hole, hole! Are you? <gasps> what happened to the window that was in there? Oh gosh, I don't know, Mister Colby. I was in the shop all day. Now look what Rupert and Zuki did. Oh, thank you, adulated, feeble-minded, dim-witted. Oh, Matthew! It's Cousin Dusty. Oh no! <laughs> Again, Cousin Gussie. Good heaven, this place is a shambles. You're telling me. Well, gracious, how long is it going to be like this? Oh, it'll be like this for months, maybe years. Really? You wouldn't want to stay here under these conditions, would you, Cousin Gussie? And why not? <laughs> well, I didn't want to inconvenience you, that's all. Oh, I'll be the judge of my own convenience. Yes, Cousin Gussie. I have a surprise for you. This trip, I'm only going to stay in six months. <laughs> yes, Cousin Gussie. Now, how do I get upstairs to my room? Right through that new door. Well, isn't it closer to the hall, man? No, no, no. Go right through that new door. Well, all right. I'll see you all for dinner. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, what happened? Get me out from under this door! <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry, Cousin Gussie. Matthew Colby, now take your hands off of me. You, you, premeditated murderer. You, you, killer, you. I've always known you didn't like me, but I never thought you'd try to kill me. Now I'm getting out of here this minute. I'll never step foot in this house again as long as I live. Oh, here, let me help. You. Don't get touch me, you. You are fascinator. Goodbye. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Colby, I'm terribly sorry. Sorry? Why, son, you fixed something I couldn't fix for years. You got rid of Cousin Gussie. Oh, Daddy, then you're not angry with Mel. Angry? Why, Mel, my son, you're a genius. Gosh, thanks, Mr. Colby. I've never seen you so happy before. You don't seem your old self. Oh, <laughs> Mel, you're wonderful. I'm I'm deeply indebted to you. But then maybe I can go ahead and make the, all the repairs in the house? No, maybe it's about it, Melvin. The job is yours. Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> now, how soon can you get me a new window to cover that big hole? Oh, it'll only take about uh, six months. <laughs> six months. <laughs> what are you talking about? You mean that I have to live with that big hole in the side of my house for six months? But, Mr. Colby, oh, you stupid adult-painted He's his old <laughs> self again. <laughs> Zuki, 
I hope you benefited by our experience today. Yes, my lad. Everything has a moral, you know. Just what did you learn? Well, I, I learned that, uh, that, uh, that people should uh, be uh, stick together. Uh, 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 they should work hand in hand. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 one for all and all for will be, it will be, it will be. Ah, I learned if you want to be, uh, be, do anything right, <laughs> do it yourself. <laughs> This is the Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. From Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle presents the Mel Blanc Show. My lawnmower needs sharpening. I've got to take it to Mel Blanc's fix-it shop. My wife's percolator top is cracked. I've got to take it to Mel Blanc's fix-it shop. Oh, my stocking has a run in it. I've got to take it to Mel Blanc's fix-it shop. My wife's going to have a baby. i got to take her to Mel Blanc... Uh, to the hospital! Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Earl Ross, Joe Kern, Zookie, Victor Miller and his orchestra... And as the star in his own fix-it shop, Mel Blanc. <laughs> now let's drop in at Mel Blanc's fix-it shop. You know, Mel is one of those fellows who'll tackle any odd job and make it come out even. But it's an even bet that when he's through, the odds will be against him. You'll see just what I mean as soon as you listen to Mel talking things over with his girlfriend, Betty. Gee, honey, your father's going to be proud of me when he sees how I fixed up everything for the company picnic tomorrow. The tables, the chairs, the barbecue. Yes, Mel. Yeah, but I keep remembering last year's picnic. You and I stayed after everybody left. Uh-huh. You slipped your arm around my waist. I slipped my arm around your waist. Yeah. And then we both puckered up and... Uh, yeah. We blew out the fire together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, silly. But really, tomorrow's picnic means a great deal to Father. Well, what's so special about it? Well, this year, Lionel Owens, the district manager of Supermarkets Incorporated, is guest of honor. Well, that's nice. Uh, but you and I will be together all day. Well, now, listen. Huh? You see, Daddy has an idea Mr. Owens may promote him to be assistant district manager. Gee, that'd be nice for your father. Hey, look, honey, tomorrow let's you and I take a rowboat. Now, I'm trying to tell you something. Huh? Lionel Owens is very important to Daddy. And I have to be with him most of the day, make things pleasant for Mr. Owens at the picnic. Oh, I get it. We just want to help Daddy in any way we can, you know. I know, and I'm trying my best. Look at this banner I painted to welcome Mr. Owens. Wait till I read it to you. The employees of Supermarket Incorporated Number 12 welcome Lionel Owens' big ham. Now! A uh, big ham and shrimp barbecue. <laughs> Guess I put the comma in the wrong place. <laughs> yes. Honey, you don't really mind about Mr. Owens and me tomorrow, do you? Well, I had it all planned to be with you. I know, but what about Father? Let him get his own girl. <laughs> I mean, um... Darling, if Mr. Owens has a good time at the picnic tomorrow, there may be a promotion in it for Daddy. Remember, Mr. Owens is pretty important. Yeah, he must be. Your father came here this morning just to tell me that Mr. Owens is a big success in business. Not like some other people he knows. Oh, man. And he told me Mr. Owens was a big athlete in college. All American. A real man. Not like some people he knows. He said Lionel Owens is a kind of a man any father would be proud to have for a son-in-law. Not like some other people he knows. I wonder who all those people are your father knows. <laughs> You know Lionel Owens couldn't possibly mean a thing to me. You're just as big a success as he is any day. You know it and I know it. Yeah, too bad it's just a secret between you and me. <laughs> well, honey, anyway, tomorrow, remember, I'm spending the day with Mr. Owens to please Father. It's, it's strictly a business deal. Yeah, and I'm getting the business. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Colby. Uh, uh, yes. <clears throat> yes, it is a nice day, isn't it? <laughs> Melvin, I'm a little worried about the picnic tomorrow. Oh, there's nothing to worry about. Uncle Rupert, Zuki, and I fixed everything. The chairs, the barbecue, the banner for Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens, I'm worried about. 
He has an idea. He's just as good an athlete as the day he left college. He thinks he's as strong as an ox. Well, gee, Mr. Colby, he ought to enjoy showing off on those two strength testers. You know those two muscle meters we rented from the amusement park? Yes, he'll be tickled pink if he wins. But if by some freak he loses, I'll never get that job as assistant district manager. Well, then you have to find somebody who'll compete against Mr. Owens. Somebody who'll be sure to lose. Yes, what we need is a little weakling, a surefire pushover. That's right. I know just the man, but I don't know whether or not he'd do it. Oh, Mr. Colby, anybody who'd refuse to help you in a situation like this is a, well, uh... That's a... all I wanted to know. Then I'll ask him. What's his name? Mel Blank. Mel Blank? Me? Oh, hey, Mr. Colby, I'm no athlete. Exactly. You get the idea. Oh, no. I, I posed for one of those health ads. You know those before and after pictures? Uh, which one were you, before or after? Neither. I was heaven forbid. <laughs> Oh, but it's wonderful. You know, I can just see it now. Lionel Owens takes the mallet, swings at the muscle meter, up goes the whatchamacallit, hits the thingamajig, and the bell rings. Yeah. One thousand, the meter reads Superman. Gee, and Mr. Owens wasn't even trying. And then comes your turn. Yeah. You step up, swing the mallet down with all your might, the thingamabob flies up and up and up and up. What does a meter read for me? One hundred, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Oh, but Mr. Colby, what will Betty think of me? Ah, I... we won't say a word about this to anyone, understand? Oh, I knew I could count on you, son. Oh, now I must go down to the station and pick up Mr. Owens. Must you? In fact, I think I'll bring him here first, just to let him see uh, <laughs> what kind of competition he'll be up against tomorrow. Well, I heard a cutthroat competition, but why must it be my throat? <laughs> Is it true what Father told me? You're going to compete against Mr. Owens tomorrow? Yeah, on the muscle meter, but... Oh, darling, I'm so proud of you. Well, maybe you better wait till tomorrow. Well, now, this is what I've been waiting for. You taking this way to show Daddy you're not spineless, that you've got a lion's heart and a quick eye. Gosh, wouldn't it be easier if he just gave me a physical? <laughs> <laughs> oh, darling, I just know you're going to win. Oh, look, here come Father Mr. Owens now. Morning, Mr. Owens. I want you to meet Bearcat Blank, the strongest man in town. <laughs> I'd be delighted to. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, and this is my daughter, Betty. Hello, Mr. Owens. Well, well, well. I've looked forward to meeting you. <laughs> it's my pleasure. It's my girl. Uh, now, Mel, aren't you going to shake hands with Mr. Owens? That's right. Put her there, Bearcat. Oh, oh, oh! What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I never use that hand much anyway. <laughs> I, I hear you're quite a fella in the muscle department. Good, good. I want some real competition. Here, feel some real muscles. Well, go on, feel. Gee, they are real, aren't they? <laughs> you know where I got these? Eastern Columbia, Broadway at night. college days, I used to get up every morning and chop up six cords of wood for breakfast. Boy, was that good. I like Wheaties much better. <laughs> it's smell a card, Mr. Owens. <laughs> well, uh, we'd better be going. Come on. Good to know you, Blank. Put her there. Oh, I, I'd rather not. I might hurt your other hand. <laughs> Goodbye, Mel. You coming, Father? I'll be right with you. Now, look, Melvin, it's all understood then, huh? I guess so. Owens wins, you lose. If Owens doesn't get a chance to show off those muscles of his tomorrow, he's going to be feeling real awfully bad. And if he feels bad, I'll feel bad. And, well, you know what that means. Yeah, I'll feel worse. Yeah. Zookie, my lad, installing these ridiculous muscle meters has me completely fatigued. Yeah, I'm all to the attire, to the attire. Ow, 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 I'm all beat, 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 beat. Uh, I'm exhausted. Uh, exa <laughs> I feel swell. <laughs> that supermarket super athlete Owens will give Mel an awful trouncing tomorrow. How does Mel expect to win? He ought to wise up to himself. Yeah, uh, me, uh, Mel ought to get next to himself when, when it comes to me. Must, uh, me, uh, me uh, uh, he, he ought to get next to himself when it comes to... Uh, uh, he, he ought to get next to, him, uh, to himself when he... <laughs> He could meet more nice people that way. <laughs> Listen, Zuki, Mel is not going to lose. I have a plan. A bee, a bee, a bee, a bee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zuki, we're going to loosen the spring in this red machine so that no matter how hard this Owens fellow hits it, 
It won't register over 200. Understand? Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to tighten the spring on this blue machine so that when Melvin brings his puny mallet down, the bell on top will resound for hours. Get it? Oh, it's certainly, it's, 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 no. <laughs> uh, how, how can you tell which uh, muscle meter, uh, uh, which guy is supposed, uh, whether uh, Mel can, uh, how, how can you, uh, how? <laughs> Don't you worry, Cookie. I'll see that Mel works only on the blue machine. I've taken care of that. Honest Uncle Rupert had himself appointed referee. You, uh, you did? Yes, my lad. Melvin just can't lose. You call me to powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate to powder. A breath of trouble makes no detour. It strikes the rich as well as the poor. Perhaps that little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, has even caught up with you. Be on your guard. Do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, our Mr. Fix-It, Mel Blank, is really in a fix. Mel has promised to lose to Lionel Owens in a contest of strength on the muscle meter. But Uncle Rupert and Zookie, who know nothing of Mel's promise, have fixed it so that Mel can't lose. Well, we find Mel and Betty at the picnic grounds now, but you can bet that before the day is over, it'll be anything but a picnic for our hero. Hey, look, Betty, suppose I don't show up so well against Mr. Owens. Would it matter very much to you? Oh, of course not. I know you're going to do your best against him in this contest. And when it's all over, you'll feel like a new man. Yeah, and whoever I feel like will be an improvement. <laughs> Honey, don't talk like that. I know you're going to win today. How can you be so sure? Well, I love you, don't I? Hmm, that's logical. <laughs> oh, be serious, darling. What's the matter with you? Oh, I don't know. I just don't have the ambition to amount to anything. Now, that's... Silly. I don't have the personality to amount to anything. That's not true. And I don't have the brains to amount to anything. Well, there's a fine time to stop arguing with me. <laughs> oh, darling. Well, now, listen, I really must get back to Mr. Owens. Say, do you know what that big windbag said? What, honey? He said he can tear a telephone book in half. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can he? <laughs> yes, he tore one in half for me. Oh. A Chicago directory, too. Oh, well, well, I can tear a telephone book in half, too. You can, Mel? Yeah, if it's one from Ghost Town, Arizona. <laughs> well, goodbye, honey. Bye. Don't forget, I'm with you. Thanks, honey. Oh, this is fine. If I win, I lose. If I lose, I win. Well, at least you can't say I'm not getting an even break. <laughs> Yes, Uncle Rupert. Uh, Uncle Rupert. Uh, Uncle Rupert. Uh, 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 hi, Rupert. <laughs> Are you sure you fixed those muscle meters so that Melvin can't lose? Oh yeah, everything is everything is okay. Okay, check. <laughs> what took you so long? Uh, I ran into uh, Doctor Crab. Doctor Crab, that dog doctor. What's he doing here at the picnic? Well, he, he wants to see you. Here he comes now. I'll talk to him. Zookie. You get back and watch those machines. Yeah, okay. Oh, hello, Christopher. How's the good dog doctor today? Consultant veterinarian, if you don't mind. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. <laughs> Just got a catch in my throat. Could I have a pan of water? <laughs> Say, Christopher, do you realize you hang around dog kennels so much? You're beginning to sound like a dog? 
You're very kind. Thank you, Rupert. <laughs> Christopher, I'm in a hurry. I have to referee a contest of strength between Melvin and Mr. Owens. Oh, I wish you'd introduce me to Mr. Owens. I want to ask him to market my special dog food. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Dr. Crab's Doggy Dinner. How does it taste? Oh, delicious. <laughs> Okay, Christopher, I'll tell Mr. Owens. Thanks. I'd have told him myself, but I couldn't get to him for all those wild kids here at the picnic. <laughs> oh, come now, Christopher. You must have been pretty wild yourself when you were a pup. <laughs> oh, no. I lived a very sheltered childhood. In fact, I was kept on a leash. My mother saw to that. Your mother? What about your father? Who do you think was on the other leash? <laughs> oh, go away. Go away. I've wasted enough time oh, already. I'll go. Goodbye, Rupert. Remember, don't put a dash hund in a revolving door. He's much too long, my friend. He'll only catch up with himself and say, Brother, this is the end. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen of supermarket number 12, you're about to witness a contest of strength and skill between your esteemed district manager, this mass of muscles, Lionel Owen. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Here in my hand, you see a Chicago telephone directory. Watch closely. Oh. <laughs> Wish he'd stop tearing up those telephone books. And his opponent, the grand boy... That magnificent specimen of manhood, proprietor of our local fix-it shop, Mel Blank. Hooray! <laughs> Thank you, Miss Colby. And now, Mr. Owen, step right up to your muscle meter. No, 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 not that one. Right here, the red oh, one. Anything you say. Now, gentlemen, the first one to ring the bell will be the winner. You have three tries. Your first, Mr. Owens. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, stand back, everybody. This is going to be a cinch. A thousand the first time. <laughs> a hundred? A hundred on the muscle meter. Good for you, Mr. Owens. The meter reads, weak as a kitten, drink more milk. Hey, wait a minute. Wait till I take another swing at this. I'll break it in half. <laughs> Fifty and the meter reads, top of the mark, if you're a grandmother. I don't understand it. Why'd everybody get further back? Spread out. I'll observe this. Back to a hundred and the meter again reads, weak as a kitten. Oh, no. No, no. It can't be. I'm through. I'm through. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Owens. I probably won't hit 75. That's right, Mel. You won't hit that high, will you? Me, Mr. Colby? Why? Right here, Melvin. Uh, the blue muscle meter. Step right up, my boy. Go ahead, darling. You show him. Okay. Well, here goes, everybody. Oh. <laughs> Did somebody hear something? <laughs> One thousand on the muscle meter, and the meter reads, Superman! Superman! Oh! That's wonderful, Mel, and with only one hand. Yeah, my left hand, too. Mel Blank, I want to talk to you. Oh, Mr. Colby, I honest, I just... I want to talk to you. I can't now. I'll see you later. I, I got to get a candy bar, you know, for energy. Melvin, the boy, wait. Wait for Uncle. Mr. Colby? Uh, oh, yes, Mr. Owen. I want to talk to you. Alone. And now, look, Mr. Owen, you weren't in form. Everybody has an off no. day. No, Colby, let's face it. I'm slipping. I've been working too hard as district manager. The old fire is gone. Fire? Oh, you mean fire's gone. Oh. <laughs> yes, Colby. When I got out of college, I, 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 I promised myself that the moment I started losing my grip, I'd give up work completely and, and build myself up again. You don't say now you can help me, Colby. You've got to take my place as district manager. Me? District manager? No, I know it'll take a toll of your strength as it did me, but you won't let me down, will you? Will you accept? Will I? <laughs> I will. <laughs> Uncle Rupert, let me get this straight. You say you and Zuki fixed those muscle meters so I couldn't help winning? Exactly, my lad. No job too big for the fix-it shop. 
Now, are you pleased with your old uncle? Oh, but you don't understand. The only reason Mr. Colby entered me against Owens was for me to lose. I promised to lose. Lose? Mr. Colby will kill me. He'll lose his job. Oh, what a mess. Oh, I'm sorry, Melvin. Hey, wait, maybe it's not too late. I hope I can straighten this out before Mr. Colby gets fired. Say, Mr. Owens! Yes? Say, uh, what do you say you take another crack at the muscle meter, huh? Uh, it's no use, Mr. Blank. I just haven't got it in me. Uh, Melvin, uh, can't you see that Mr. Owens is tired? Very tired. Oh, come on, Mr. Owens, just one more try. You can do better than grandmother. No, no thanks. I've been embarrassed enough for one day. Melvin, let's just let things stand the way they are, shall we? Mm, shall we? <laughs> oh, Mr. Owens, please. Here, here, take this mallet. Step up to the blue muscle meter. Please, go on, try it, please. Well, okay, but it's really no use. You see, a thousand, Mr. Owens. You're a... Yeah, you're, yeah, I'm, I'm Superman. I'm Superman! Whoa! Well, that's more like it. I'm my old self again. Mr. Colby. Where's Mr. Colby? Hey, here I am, sir. Oh, I thought I was through, Mr. Colby, but Mel here changed my mind. Yeah, didn't I? Well, I won't be needing anybody to replace me, Colby. I guess I'm still right there on the beam, thanks to Mel here. See you later, everybody. Oh, Daddy, aren't you proud of Mel? Oh, uh, you... Daddy, oh, put down that mouth! Hold me! Hold me! We'll be back in a moment with a Zookieism. What's a Zookieism? Wait and see. Use Colgate tooth powder. Keep smiling just right. Use it each morning. Use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. You know, not even a loving wife can bring herself to mention a little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, to her husband. Don't let that breath of trouble hurt your happy marriage. Be sure to do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate tooth powder. For Colgate tooth powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate tooth powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name, Colgate tooth powder, with the accent on powder. So take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. Zuki, I hope you learned something about competition from today's picnic. Yes, Zuki. Everything in life has a moral. What did you learn? Uh, well, I learned that uh, to win, you got to uh, put your shoulder to the... Well, uh, to win, you got to put your nose to the... Uh, uh, to win, you got to... Uh, you got to... <laughs> you got to be a good loser. <laughs> Say hello to Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Halo lets hair sparkle with natural brilliance. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather to quickly carry away loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. The Mel Blanc Show was written by David Victor and Herb Little Jr. and was produced and directed by Joe Rhine. Ladies, remember, your butcher pays you four cents a pound for used kitchen fat. Sell him a can this week for sure. <laughs> Yes, the Columbia Broadcasting System.